Alright guys, we got some big news. Premi the Remy and the Let me stop. It's you me. It's me, your boy Game Paradise, and we have a lot of big news for Sonic Frontiers, including a fuck ton of new gameplay. Like all of this, all this brand new gameplay, brand new news. So let's just get straight into it. Um Yeah, bro, but like This is not coming from IGN, so like it might be some good shit, so let's just see it. Sonic Frontiers All is right. ambitious. That much has always been clear. The mm -hmm. game's initial gameplay reveal may not have painted the fruits of that ambition in the most polished light. Technically, it was all a little bit rough around the edges, but even still, I've been excited and curious about the potential this new concept has to redefine what a modern 3D Sonic game could look like. I was very fortunate to have an opportunity to go hands-on with the game recently at a Summer Games Fest press event. That control! I was very fortunate to have an opportunity. Wait! Sonic's control is so good. Yo, maybe the interviews weren't capping. Look how fast he turns. That's not automated at all. If this was Forces, honestly, I'd say if this was any other Sonic game, Sonic would have won right off the edge. Hold on. I'm going to be talking in Discord while I say this. So like, it's going to be a very raw reaction. I feel like I have a much more complete picture as to the potential this game has. Sonic Frontiers plays much, much better than it looks at the moment, and I fully expect that players will have a lot of fun exploring its intricately designed world once the game is released. I spent about an hour dashing, jumping, and battling my way through the sprawling, lush environment that was previously highlighted in Sonic Frontiers gameplay trailers, and my main takeaway was that the game feels great to play at almost every level, even in this pre-release state. The zone I explored in my demo, the green hilly ecosystem that has previously been okay. highlighted in trailers, is an absolute joy to explore, being both vast and dense with compelling things to do. From tucked away platforming challenges that can lead to hidden collectibles, to giant intimidating bosses that- Okay, I hear the click again. So like, there's definitely like different gameplay modes. See and do in this first area. Better yet, what I saw- Oh shit. Had me feeling hopeful that this could be the smartest 3D Sonic game in a while. One that really rewards player curiosity <laughs> more than any other previous entry. Sonic Frontiers has two different playstyles to choose from. Action style, which gives Sonic a bit of extra weight as he moves around. Well, Sonic! Style, which is considerably faster. Rest assured that if Sonic's speed... Wait, hold on, slow, what did he say? Speed style, which is action style, which gives Sonic... Sonic Frontiers has two different playstyles to choose from. Action style, which gives Sonic a bit of extra weight as he moves around. Okay. And high speed style, which is considerably faster. Rest assured that if Sonic's speed looked a bit slow in previous gameplay trailers, it feels much better when you are actually playing it. Action style is being billed as an experience recommended for more casual players, and high speed style is described in the game as recommended for people who are used to Sonic games. While the game definitely feels better to play at a faster speed, in my opinion, it's just more exhilarating and challenging. Action Style did a great job at helping me get accustomed to how Sonic moves in this new open environment, Sonic Frontiers. And his movement style combined with the many, many grind rails and boosts that was sick. The environment allows for what felt like a lot of room for creative traversal of the world. And little trick while he's going off this little ramp? A lot of room for creative traversal of the world. The hell was that? It looked and odd. What I played of Sonic Frontiers was all remarkably freeform. While you are following a story with an ultimately set through line, how quickly you get to the next part of the game and what you do along the way... The trick system, so I'm, I'm through, assuming... Your progress in Sonic Frontiers seems to be primarily gated by portals, which can only be activated after you complete a certain number of activities around the map. But what activities you decide to do, and the order in which you do them, seems mostly up to you. Want to go explore that massive tower in the distance? Hey, if you can find a way to the top, go for it. Want to focus on locating the small environmental puzzles that are scattered about, or participate in some timing-based challenges? Well, you can do that too. Want to go challenge one of the many large bosses that are stomping and sometimes flying around the environment? The game will not stop you. There is even fishing, apparently. Okay, so I'm glad like they don't gatekeep you and limit you in this open world. And sure, nothing is keeping you from racing through the game as fast as possible, but if you want to collect as many rings as you can, or just generally look cool while The puzzles around, still look like some baby shit, but it's whatever. Explore alternate routes. Now, look, it is weird that there are grind rails just floating around the game world, tethered to nothing, and there were a few that I wrote on that didn't really seem to go anywhere, but most of them did, and the ones that did often led to something interesting. 
And while I didn't receive any specific details, the Sega rep that I spoke to at the event said that there are multiple other biomes in the game beyond the green and hilly zone we've seen so far. Okay. Although what those other regions will look like is anyone's guess. Don't expect combat to be the mindless breeze that it has the reputation for being in other 3D Sonic games either. Very few of the enemies you'll encounter are mindless foes. Most of them are either very aggressive, very resilient, or very large. Each encounter that I played through felt important, and each type of enemy I faced in this first area felt the same. Oh my! Them, for example, was invulnerable unless I managed to use my Psy Loop ability to draw a trail around it, at which point it would be stunned long enough for me to get in a few attacks. Another one required me to use Sonic's homing feature to chip away at armor piece by piece, and my favorite encounter, a massive lumbering creature that vaguely reminded me of Horizon Zero Dawn's tall neck, required Don't me talk to about Horizon, bro. Side of the boss, and then get above its shield to perform some mid-air attacks on its weak point. You can also parry attacks and perform ground stomps, so Sonic's repertoire of skills the fuck was is that? Already pretty comprehensive even at this early stage. And in classic Sonic fashion, if you lose all your rings, which can happen in only a few hits if you're careless, Sonic will meet his demise. Uh, fortunately, any damage you've dealt to a boss before you die seems to persist when you return to them, so the penalty for messing up isn't too harsh, but it's all just challenging enough that I felt an engaging amount of pressure to maintain awareness as to what my foes were doing. Also, it sounds like this version of Sonic will get upgraded over time if you choose to. Collect enough skill pieces around the environment, and these will eventually merge into skill points that can be used to unlock new abilities. Okay, so this is just the gameplay they showed earlier. That turn looks so good. I don't know for sure what the full scope of this system is, but it seems promising at this early stage, and I'm curious as to how vastly the Sonic Frontiers experience may or may not change depending on how I choose to upgrade my version of Sonic. One thing I didn't get to see too much of in this demo was the story, although from what I did see, don't expect some big emotional magnum opus. While Sonic doesn't really seem to talk too much during gameplay, yeah, okay. The I saw contain the same old charming goofiness that all Sonic I'll players say, are deeply familiar I think the other reason why this so game feels like very empty is because of how like I want to say emotionless, but like how like Sonic isn't talking. Like something that's really cool for Frontiers, I mean the Front Forces, is um. I really like that in Forces, Sonic like just randomly talks throughout the stages, and like I was hoping they'd bring that back for this game, but it seems like they're not. But I hope they do. Like Sonic, just having Sonic talk throughout the open world would make this game a lot uh see it feel a lot more alive for me at least to a technical state that's solid enough for a release later this year. What I played was very much an early pre-release build, so it's not necessarily a metric of how the final game will turn out, and what I experienced was technically solid overall. There are just a lot of rough edges at the moment, from pretty egregious pop-in and some bland textures and lighting to a subpar resolution, and I wasn't even playing the Switch version. Still, there's plenty of time between now and the end of the year, so there's no reason the game needs to launch in a rough shape, and mechanically everything is fun to play as it is, I thought, and that's truly a statement that I am very pleased to say out loud. I left my demo of Sonic Frontiers overall very impressed with what I played, and I'm very much looking forward to playing more. I get the sense that the surface has only been barely scratched as to the scope of this game. Sonic Frontiers is currently scheduled to launch at some point this year on Nintendo Switch and other platforms. For all the latest and greatest news as to what is new and exciting in the world of Nintendo, keep it tuned in to NintendoEverything.com. Wow. Sega and IGN. Mainly Sega. What the fuck were y'all showing? Sonic. Sonic's gotta go fast. Has, has anyone in the office, like, tested to see, like, how long it takes for Sonic to, like, run from one side of the map, like, all the way to the other? Oh, I actually didn't think about that. Really quickly. <laughs> This is actually a gr really great thing that they were testing in development when they started making these games. Everyone was running from start to finish, you know, how quickly can you clear the island uh, from one, you know, side to the other. Uh, they were That's actually very... Because Sonic is such a fast character. Yeah, I was going to say. Building this open zone area, if you're going through it too quick, like, that, that doesn't work with the open zone format. So they were, you know, they were like, they'd make the island, they'd run across it, they're like, this is no good, throw it out, we got to make it bigger to make it bigger even bigger and they're constantly testing the size of the island and constantly flexing themselves because they have such a fast character. i hope there is like not like a straight line but like playground to play in 
a section of where like there was like no, not like kind of like a straight path where you could just zoom through like maybe 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 just like, it's like a straight path and like maybe like you jump slide defeat an enemy real quick like basically like a like a, a forces level real quick but it's like just straight through the island from like beginning to the end of the island just to see how fast you can go that'd be that'd be cool what do you all think about all of this gameplay and brand new reels that just got brand new news that just got revealed for Sonic Frontiers? Me personally, I think I'm a lot more hopeful for the game, but a lot of my criticism still stands with the base game. Um, I think a lot of it just, well, I think my OG criticism still stands with the open world of how the open world looks very bland and dry and how the lack of actual Sonic environments is very jarring to me like the lack of corkscrews the lack of looty loops um all the bunch of things but i get but i guess this is a boost game so a lot of it doesn't have to have that for like so i guess for a boost title this does work in a sense for the adventure style game they would have to add like more sonic slopes and all that shit but like i don't know i think i just i think i just i think i'd rather prefer this game being adventure style than boost style but it's fine um, so for what for for it being a boost game, I think it's fine. Um, I still think the w world looks very bland. Like not much to do. Like they still could have added like some slopes and shit. Um, for the boost, cause like even the boost gameplay has like different slopes and like corkscrews and loopy loops and all that you can do. Uh, this game doesn't seem to have that, but we still don't know what the other islands look like. I think they said there's like four other islands, maybe, according to leaks. But um. Yeah, we don't know. I think I think the game looks, the game looks a lot better than what we um thought. Um, I have I, I I'm a little more hopeful for this game now. Um, also the game's not getting delayed. Um, this game's still slated for 2022, so um that's that's sick. Um, yeah, let me know what you guys think about the comment section below. Are you guys excited for this game? And have your eyes and opinions changed on this game with all this brand new gameplay we're getting? We still haven't seen any of the cyberspace levels. There have been like leaked pictures that have come out of like some Cyrus C cells that look like Sky Sanctuary or Green Hill Zone. But um yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Hope you all enjoyed. Please remember to comment and subscribe. I'm gonna be dropping more Frontiers gameplay as we get more. We should be getting um I don't think the next batch of gameplay will come out, but like for sure we, we should be seeing uh, stuff about the cyberspace levels on um the 29th of June because that is when NDA runs out. Um, for all the people that played the demo with the cyberspace levels, so, um, yeah, I'll see y'all then.